Hello, everybody. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. God bless you from wherever you are listening to me. I bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus. A few days ago, I brought a video here where Kimani and some uh, senior preachers in Kenya and their sons and wives hosted a Nigerian and where the matter and the issues that has to do with Apostle Richard E. S. Takim was part of their discussions. And, um, you know, I I did question certain things because um, it's becoming very, very immature. It's becoming very, very unchristian. It's becoming very, very conspiratory that preachers are now, you know, ganging up against somebody. I understand, like I said in that video, that definitely Apostle Takim have stepped, has stepped on toes and... But the question I asked was, if this thing has become this very, very important to them, then it means that somebody or some people somewhere are beginning to feel threatened. It means that some people's interest, uh, you know, uh, is beginning to be tampered with. And I made a statement, I made an example of a certain Elimas, could name Baha Jesus, who was, you know, the right-hand man of a certain politician at that time. But then when Apostle Paul came into the town and he found his way to the office of that politician. Now, Elimas did everything he could to stop Apostle Paul from preaching the gospel to the politician. And you know why? Elimas was a sorcerer. Elimas had, you know, some kind of witch doctor's powers. And the, the man, you know, um, accepting Christ would mean bad market for Elimas. And so he he, he he concocted the idea of dis, distracting the man and hindering the gospel. Then Apostle Paul spoke in authority and blindness fell upon the man, Elimas, bar Jesus. And that paved the way for the politician to give his life to Christ Jesus. And so my question has been, could it be that some people's interest is beginning to be encroached upon and, you know, something like... Um, Recently, Pastor Criflo Dollars came out and said he has learned another thing at his. It has to do with giving and tithing, even though that what he meant was that people have been using intimidation and planting fear in the hearts of the people to get the people to part with their money as in the name of tithe. Now, some persons have come out and they have reacted angrily. Some feel so disappointed that such a man could come out to say that thing. You know, we've heard something like, if you, don't, if you don't pay tithe, you will go to hell. If you don't pay tithe, you are a robber. And me, I have not told you not to pay tithe. I won't, I won't tell you that. And as much as Creflo Dollar said that, please, I leave you to your conscience. Do that which your conscience permits you to do. All right? Now, so, but we've had people who, who came out to speak because... That may affect them in a way because if there are these people that dwell so much on tithing and some, some of these wicked people even get this tithe from the, the people and they use it to service their sugar girls. Can you imagine? And that was not part of God's plan for tithe in the first place. And meanwhile, getting money from people is not you know, one of the, it's not just the tithe, there, there is also, there are other tithes in the Bible that they too should have done. But I'm not talking about tithe here, I'm talking about people's interest. So it seems like some interest is being encroached upon, and so there is battle. Now, Apostle Takim has come out and has reacted, sort of, and he reacted to the Bible, he reacted with the Bible rather, and uh, tells little things about himself. Please, sorry, I've spoken too much and I want you to watch the video. Put down your comment in the comment section. Let us know what you think about the video. Please don't forget to like this video and give us your subscription if you have not uh, subscribed. And one more thing, if you'd like to join our prayer line, um, the prayer, prayer group, all right, it's free of charge. You, are, you don't pay. Just let us pray together. That is just what it is all about. Contact me, you know, via WhatsApp, the number that you'll be seeing displayed on the screen. God bless you. We pray, we meet every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you know, 
in the night, Nigeria time, 11 p.m. So if you are interested, do not hesitate to ask us to, to add you to the group. Thank you so much. I'll be seeing you in the next video. Till I come your way again in the next video. I remain your brother in the Lord. And from me to you, Shalom. How does a junior who has received a word from God, let's put it a rebuke, how does that junior communicate to his senior the word that he has received from the Lord? Behold, listen all, 1 Samuel 3.11. Let God be the just generation. Listen to me. Huh. Then the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do something in Israel at which both ears of everyone who hears it with, with tingle. Let me ask you a question. The content of what we have read, does he have respect for Eli? No. Why? Eli should not expect respect from God. So, when Samuel would not be speaking to him, though he was younger in age, there should be no respect in the content of the message of God to Eli. Because God is no respecter for persons. So if you are demanding respect when God is asking you for repentance, you are just very stupid. If you are talking about respect, when God is talking about repentance, you are very stupid. When God is confronting lawlessness, you, you are asking, you are looking for respect. You are dumb, you are blind, you are doomed for destruction. My question is for... Um I don't know, um, it's called Apostle. Hear me. We have a Nigerian young man around. And he is really talking. And harassing our fathers. My question to you is, I know you are from Nigeria. Is it in the order or manner of Nigerian young men to rebuke their fathers? I think that's um, a matter on my heart. And I think uh, you, you need to help us so that we know what to do or how to behave because it may be cultural. <laughs> <laughs> no. It may be cultural and it, may, it might be from the Yoruba. Is it Yoruba no, or the. Actually, the Yorubas are one of the most respectable Please help us. cultures in Nigeria. We need help before we respond. Respect. <laughs> Respect is built into the culture of Yorubas. So when you see an elder, you'll actually, if you're a male, you'll actually, they call it dobale to them. So respect is very, very highly um, 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 entrenched in Yoruba society. So you won't, I don't know, what, what tribe is he from? We don't know. Who don't understand should give me their ear today number one i don't belong to the perverted church i belong to the church of jesus christ whenever i speak the perverted church will get angry the perverted church will attack me the perverted church will say nonsense about me i don't care two i don't belong to adulterated grace I belong to the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The grace that teaches us to deny ungodliness. Are you understanding me? That teaches us to live soberly and looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearance of Jesus Christ. Three, I don't belong to charlatans and money making pastors and thieves on the pulpit who call themselves spiritual fathers, rapers and adulterers. I don't belong to that. I am a priest with our creed. We belong to the seed of Levite. The blood of Jesus has watched us and we carry the DNA to bring order back to the life of believers. Listen carefully. The next number four. I don't belong to the kind of spirit in the church in Kenya. I belong to the spirit of Jesus Christ that was poured on the door of Pentecost. He said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. That is the spirit I belong to. It's a spirit that does not use oil. It's a spirit you don't put in an oil. You don't put in a bottle. It is not a symbol. It's a reality. The power of the Holy Ghost that burns within your vein. That is where I belong to. 
Listen carefully. Five. I don't belong to the doctrines of demons. I don't belong to madmen doctrines. I'm not the stock of redemption of firstborn. I'm not the stock of raising of altars. I'm not the stock of silencing altars. I belong to the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So when I speak, understand where I'm coming from. Understand where I'm coming from. Do you not think I am one of those preachers on the street who have drunk the waters of Babylon and they vomited on people and instead of people getting born again, they get psychological safe, but they are still unsafe in spirit, marching to hell with their Bible. I don't belong to that stock. Number six, I don't belong to the kingdom of men. I belong to the kingdom of God. The influence of God over a territory, impacting it with his will and his plan until, until, until the will of God is done on earth as written in heaven. And seven, I'm not in ministry for attention. I'm not in ministry for money. Are you understanding me? We are here diffusing the knowledge of Christ among those who are perishing and, on, and among those who are being saved. So if you don't understand me, it's because you are not part of the kingdom of God. Because Christ is not in your spirit. The Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. And the voice of a stranger, they will not follow. Our assignment in the crowd of the spirit is to talk to the sheep of Jesus Christ. Let them recognize the voice of the stranger. So that the voice of let them recognize the voice of a stranger and, and separate it from the voice of Jesus so that they will be able to separate from the voice of strangers and begin to listen to the voice of Jesus Christ. So having said so, I hope you understand me when I begin to share. So let me say it this way. If this guy refuses to conform, God will deal with him or kick him out. Period. As long as what he is doing is 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 clearly biblically wrong then yeah we can say it is wrong <laughs> <laughs> all of us seated here have encountered a piece or two of his opinion yeah he's claiming that uh, doctrine doctrine matters he's correcting doctrine in the country and and there is no preacher that is true to according to him all of them are error and there is no preacher that is true to according to him all of them are error and he uses the word they are stupid and foolish and they need to be schooled uh, because uh, some of them even what they teach is beyond is below Sunday school really that's just pride and rebellion okay he has to be sorted out okay send him to me if you come <laughs> we will do that so we have to land this vessel and thank you mom for asking that question recently we spoke very serious jamming things happening in the church in Kenya, and somebody is demanding for respect oh he's arrogant he's calling me arrogant he said i'm not respecting people People who are making such statements are very stupid. They don't understand God. In fact, they are not even part of the kingdom of God. Because if they were part of the kingdom of God, church words would not come out of their mouth. And, and, and they call themselves pastors. Now, if the person you call a pastor, a bishop or archbishop, does not know God, then what has he been doing in ministry? Look at the content of what Samuel was received from God. Do you see God saying, Behold, I will do something in Israel at which both ears of everyone who hears it with Tingo, his excellency Eli, his lordship Eli, the high priest Eli. Look at verse 11. He said, In that day I will perform against Eli. He did not say, In that day I will perform against Archbishop Eli. Apostle Eli, can I tell you something? There is no Holy Spirit on earth that will ever address a man of God by his title. That Holy Spirit does not exist. If you see any Holy Spirit addressing a man of God by his title, then it's either God spoke, but you pick God wrongly because 
you know the man by title, so you pick it in that context, which is in order, or God did not speak at all. For instance, if I have known me, okay, let me say it's not me talking. Let's say I am, let's say Apostle Takim is my pastor. And I, I, because of my respect for him, I call him Apostle Takim or that or whatever. When God wants to speak to me about him, God will never say that. God will never say Apostle Takim. God will not even say Takim sometimes. He could say my servant. He could say Takim. But because of my respect for him, when God now say Takim, in my spirit, I will pick Apostle Takim or I will pick that. But God is not the one calling, calling me that. Calling him that is impossible. So it is your respect that receive the prophetic word. Sorry, your honor for him, receive the prophetic word for him. But when God is speaking judgment, he will never, if he, by the time he speaks, you will not pick, pick the message within your respect for him because everything will be shattered when God is speaking about judgment. When God is confronting error, confronting what is wrong, even that, 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 that mindset will disappear when you hear the voice of God. Now that would, that, listen, it says, in that day, I will perform against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to the end. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knows. Preachers will know what their members are doing and they are not confronting them. God will judge the preachers for that. Maybe because the man is contributing money to your church. So his wickedness is not being confronted. Politicians come to church that we know that these are assassins, these are thieves, these are scammers. And yet we don't say anything about them. Their judgment will be on our head. There is judgment on preachers for the iniquity they know. The iniquity they know. Eli did not die in judgment because he committed adultery. He was very, a very clean man. He died in judgment because of the iniquity he knew. They did nothing about it. This is not, it does not need the fathers. We are there. It is a small matter. So, let the fathers rest and do the, the work. It is, Apostle said, it is called the battle of honor. The Bible says, For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knows, because his sons made themselves vile, and he did not restrain them. You see the problem? Show me where Paul poured oil on the street, standing in the Old Testament. Show me where Peter as people to raise altars stand in the old testament i throw a challenge at you i'm going to pay for the airtime in any of the media house in kenya for two hours i will pay them they will host me and you they will check revelation bring your question i will bring mine listen this is not turkey it's not nigerian remove that stop hiding in my nationality Stop hiding in, he's, he's not respecting fathers. I respect fathers. Listen, let's say I was coming to marry their daughter. I would lie down. <laughs> but I'm not coming to propose. I'm not coming to marry their daughter. I am speaking in the name of the Lord, who is no respecter of persons. If I'm speaking in my name, then I will do what to expect. But if I speak in the name of the Lord, the Bible says, listen, if I speak in the name of the Lord, I am to speak as an oracle of God. What's an oracle? Not the one, not the witch's oracle you have in Kenya. When you speak in the place of God, you demonstrate his attributes. So I am challenging. I will pay any media house. I will pay two hours. It could be Citizen TV, NTV, KTN. I will pay for it. We'll sit there so that the whole Kenyans will watch us as we examine scriptures. I am challenging you for an apostolic chat on earth. Not in a closet so that people will not see. We will start in the whole world. Let them watch us. And I will confront whatever you are doing. And you confront whatever I am doing. Then we bring the Bible and check. I'm waiting for your response.
That's my challenge.